Every year, when the Nobel Prize in Literature is awarded, there's usually an article or two published about which past recipients' works have failed to stand the test of time say, those of Pearl S. Buck, the first American woman to win the award, whose 1930s novels about Chinese peasant life now read as twee and patronizing orientalist fairy tales. Not all works of art age as well as others. Some remain consistent sources of wonder and awe and provocation for century upon century, others, removed from their context, curdle into irrelevance, if not offensiveness. The artist's difficult job is to create something that addresses the concerns of her time while also contending with the timeless, the needs and desires and frustrations that are particular not to a certain age, but to human existence. The stuff that endures is the work that does both, that manages to reflect a moment while also transcending it. But the vast majority of art is subject to the ebb and flow of cultural tides. Sometimes it's buried beneath the wave, and sometimes when circumstances change it's tossed up again to the surface, a reminder of lost treasure glinting on the water's crest. The subject of our cover story, The Boys in the Band, is a good example of how a piece of art born from a specific moment can find itself newly resonant in an entirely different one. When Mart Crowley's play opened off-Broadway in 1968, it was an instant and surprise hit, a by turns vicious, lacerating, bitingly funny and squirm-inducing portrait of eight, maybe nine, gay men at a disastrous birthday party in New York. This May, it will have its Broadway debut, with a cast composed entirely of out-gay actors, produced and directed by out-gay men. The fact that there are now enough openly gay, well-known working actors to populate a Broadway ensemble play and, indeed, to be considered draws is remarkable, both because many of us remember when this would never have been possible, but also because many of us can't imagine it would ever be anything but possible. In the intervening five decades between the play's premiere and its latest revival, 50 years that have seen the Stonewall riots, the official depathologization of homosexuality, which was removed from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders only in 1973. AIDS and same-sex marriage Crowley's work has been assessed and reassessed, revived and dismissed, beloved and reviled. But it has always, as the Times's co-chief theater critic Jesse Green notes in his lovely, searching essay, been relevant, a work of art that every gay playwright since its debut has had to be in conversation with in one way or another. Boys was, Green writes, very much a ghetto play, a peephole aimed at gay men. The titular boys were to be witnessed and gawked at, Crowley sought to humanize them, but humanization came through objectification and minimization. They were boys, after all, not men. Of all the significant changes of the past half century, one of the greatest must surely be the increasing and hard-won recognition that gay lives are, first, lives. The struggle for civil rights in this country is the struggle to be granted full humanity, to be secure in the basic dignities the right to vote, to own property, to marry, to be educated, to be protected by due process that every citizen is entitled to and deserves. It is why this play, a chronicle of men living in an era in which those rights were elusive, has such meaning today. Yes, some of the references might be dated, not to mention the costumes, one turtleneck is one too many, but its exploration of the human toll of being denied full personhood is not. Progress is never straightforward. A projectile fired into space and left to sail upward in a clean trajectory, it halts and recedes and sputters, and requires constant vigilance. 
As Green reminds us, it wasn't so long ago that the Times' review of boys thought nothing of flinging phrases like screaming la fag and fairy queens shouting bitch isisms. Boys is, often, wildly entertaining. But the real reason it still cuts so deeply is because it shows how insidious self-loathing is, and how profound and human is the yearning for respect. Crowley's play is a reflection of a certain period of American history, but it is also a mirror of our current one. Now, the peephole is wider, we can look in at the boys, but they can also look out at us. What they see is what we are.